a Venezuelan female using dating apps as her hunting ground. What started as a series of petty crimes quickly escalated into something far more sinister. With three separate crimes, three victims, and a gradual escalation of force, a series of actions that ultimately led to murder. The details of this tragic story are not for the faint of heart, but they serve as a stark reminder of the dangers that lurk in the shadows of the digital world. This is the chilling case of the murderous Badu killers. Today's case takes us all the way to the beautiful sunny country of Spain. The crime takes place around a Spanish city and region known as Zaragoza, it can be found somewhere between Barcelona and Madrid, relatively near Spain's border with France. In general, the region is considered relatively safe with a lower crime rate than the national average and a place quite popular amongst tourists. This tale starts in 2019, it's the 26th of July, and a male Romanian truck driver known as Florin J finds himself talking to a young Dominican girl called Daniela Mendoza through the dating app Badu, things seem to go well between the pair and they agree to meet that night. Florin begins his journey towards the location that Daniela provided. The meeting point is a remote and quiet bridge where the pair wouldn't be disturbed as he approaches the spot. Daniela is waiting there as agreed, leaning on an old grey car that appears to be a Mercedes, excited about what the night may bring. Florin lets Daniela in the car and at her request begins to drive towards her grandmother's house so she could pick up a jacket as she was cold. Following her directions, they drive down a remote road that turns into a dirt track. It's dark with no lighting anywhere to be seen. They arrive at her grandmother's house and sadly to Florin's dismay, it looks abandoned. Before he could realize, the car door flew open. Two individuals rip him out of the car, force him to the ground bound his wrists and feet using rope and gagged him with duct tape. With a knife to Florin's throat, the unknown assailants began to threaten him. They used a taser to electrocute him and removed his shoes so it would be difficult for him to run if he somehow managed to escape his bindings. Under the threat of imminent death, Florin gave up the PIN number to his bank account. And much to his relief, this was all the attackers were after. So with his bank card and PIN number at their disposal, they left Florin tied up and stranded in a cane field. Eventually, he managed to escape and seek refuge at a nearby farmhouse, sadly when reporting the crime to the police. They couldn't find any trace of Daniela, the culprit that had lured him into the trap. After escaping the first crime seemingly scot-free, the female thought to be called Daniela took on a new alias, this time transforming herself into Bella, a young Brazilian, and once again took to Badu in search of her next victim. It wouldn't take long for the next victim to take the bait, as on September 4th, Julian L., a 59-year-old divorced businessman, would be unfortunate enough to make contact with Bella. The two arranged to meet, under the same guise of intimate sexual affection. So Julian boarded a train and travelled to Luceni train station. He exited the train and found himself on a deserted platform in the dark, but across the tracks he could see the silhouette of the woman he thought was Bella. He approached, and much to his relief, it was in fact the person he had been talking to online. Bella was leaning against an old grey Mercedes. The pair entered the car and drove off into the remote countryside in order to be alone. Once again, the victim found themselves driving down a dimly lit dirt track. Suddenly, Julian was hit in the back of the head with a wrench while he sat in the front seat of the Mercedes. Bella's partner in crime was hiding in the back seat of the car, biding his time, waiting for the perfect moment to enact the plan. Julian, slightly dazed from the hit to the back of his head, managed to open the car door and begin to flee, fearing for his life. While he was running, Bella shouted, Kill that son of a bitch, he's getting away. Sadly, Julian wasn't fast enough, and the two men with her chased him down and captured him. With a gun pointed towards him, the criminal group gagged him, using duct tape, and bound him, once again with rope as they did in their previous excursion. Julian was thrown into the boot of the car, and in the process they broke his leg. 
He laid there struggling to breathe, with his mouth gagged and a black cloth bag over his head. Truly believing he was about to meet his end, eventually the car stopped. They took Julian for all he had. They managed to take 650 euros in cash and all his valuable possessions. However, the trio had grown more brazen in their scheme, attempting to have Julian's family pay a 12,000 euro ransom for his life. Julian refused to give any information on his family to them, stating he would rather die than put them in danger. Luckily for Julian, the threats weren't real, so defeated the criminals took off, leaving Julian beat up and stranded in a field. Julian managed to drag himself to a nearby road where he sat and waited for someone to pass by. Eventually, a farmer got Julian the help he needed. However, once again, this mysterious vixen had managed to escape, and the criminal group could continue their despicable scheme. It would be just two days after the previous crime that the third victim would find his way into Dulce's web. As on the 6th of September, Jose Antonio Delgado Fresnedo, a 54-year-old computer scientist, would make the journey to meet with the women he thought was Dulce. Sadly, not much is known about the actual events that took place, as Jose isn't around to tell the tale. It's thought he drove down to Lucini in his brand new Mercedes in order to meet the individual he knew as Dulce, and when he arrived, he was attacked taken to an abandoned industrial warehouse, robbed of all his belongings, tortured so he would give up his banking details, and then killed. It was tragically a slow and painful death. The criminal group repeatedly hit him with all manner of blunt objects. It was a savage attack that left him barely alive and breathing. But they weren't done as the group dug a shallow grave, threw Jose into it, covered him in dirt, burying him alive. He spent his last moments gasping for air, confirmed by the autopsy that found dirt in his lungs. On the 10th of September, Jose father reported him missing to the authorities. Armed with his general information and most importantly details of his new red Mercedes, they began looking for the missing man, and six days later on the 16th of September, the police located the car in question. The criminal group had sold the car for 11,000 euros through a website, and after using Jose bank card detectives had pictures of the perpetrators that the buyer of the car was able to verify. The police began to distribute the images taken from the ATMs in the local area, and a sergeant recognized one of the individuals and named him as Mohamed Akhraf. He had two restraining orders against two women who live in the town, and for the last six months, he has been in a relationship with a third woman. This led to the group being arrested, as when investigating, they would find the shallow grave of Jose Antonio Delgado, along with his belongings. The two previous victims were also able to identify both the female that they knew as Daniela and Bella, respectively, along with Mohammed as the perpetrators of their crimes. When conducting searches of the property Mohammed resided at, they found the taser and gun used in the pair's crimes, along with the belongings of the first two victims. Mohammed was also wearing a court-ordered GPS bracelet that logged his location through each of the crimes, and all of the data matched perfectly with the three incidents. The female was identified as Hedangeline Arietta. She was neither Brazilian nor Dominican, but was a Venezuelan asylum seeker that was living in Spain. The couple were charged equally in the case. While she was the bait for the crime, both played an equal role in the criminal enterprise and stood to gain equally from their actions. The Venezuelan Hedangelin Candy Arieta and her boyfriend Mohamed Atraf were each facing 58 years in prison for the string of crimes committed between July and October 2019 in Zaragoza, Spain. The couple were held in prison from October until their trial, and in a slightly unusual turn of events, the pair refused to testify and didn't turn on one another in order to try get a lighter sentence. Prosecutors requested several punishments for the defendants, for the accomplice that was present in the first assault on Florin J, the suspect, Jose Antonio Melendez, they requested 16 years in prison. In addition to prison, 
The prosecution requested compensation of 4,700 euros for the first victim, 17,000 for the second and 120,000 for the two children of the third victim, the murdered man. The judge sentenced them both to 25 years in prison for murder, six years for kidnapping, and three for fraud. This is a case that once again reminds us of the dangers of online dating. These three victims were all blinded to the danger posed in the situation. By the promise of connection and romance, perhaps they were lonely. Maybe they were gullible, but none of the victims deserved to be subjected to the experiences they went through. The culprits in this case are a clear example of the dark side of human nature. It's what happens when a human has no compassion or empathy where they are devoid of all common decency. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing for more true crime content. Until next time.